Well, it's good to be here today. And uh, there's not as many people here as we'd like to see here, but we're thankful for the ones that we we're do thankful. have. And uh, there's the, the, like I was saying earlier, the creases they called of uh, Brittany uh, earlier in the week in Tover that they had been around somebody that tested positive for COVID and they was going to go get a test done. Well, they went to go get a test done and um, they uh, told them at the doctor's office that they was exposed. It was too soon for them to take a test because it wouldn't show, you know, if they had it, it wouldn't show positive. It was too soon because he'd just been exposed like a day before. And so they told him it wouldn't do him any good. So they called Brittany. And then uh, yesterday, Brittany talked to him, and uh, Brittany Cutler had been, I don't know if it's COVID or not, but she had some, some few small signs of being sickly. And they asked Brittany, they said, uh, they said, should we come to church or should we stay home? Brittany told him, she said, if you're having any symptoms at all, she said, go ahead and stay home. She said, because we don't want, you know, we don't want everybody else to get sick. <laughs> and so that's why they're not here today. But um, last night, I, I got to thinking yesterday afternoon and uh, at how people think, you know, sometimes people say that their their entire life is mapped out for them. You know, that their entire life is always mapped out for them. And that's not the truth. You know, it's not the truth that no matter what you do in your life, you're going to end up with the same result. You know, it, it's not... Your life is not predetermined that no matter what you do throughout your life, it doesn't affect the end outcome of it. There is free will given. I'm going to go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 18. And I'm going to start with verse 1. So much in life. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter, to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it? If that nation against whom I have pronounced, pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. God is righteous. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith. I said, I would benefit thee. Now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah, go to speak, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you, and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. And they said, There is no hope. But we will walk after our own devices, and will, and will everyone do the imagination Very of his dangerous. evil hearts. Very dangerous. <clears throat> you know, God, he, he's continually molding us to what we are going to be. And what we are going to be depends on what we do in life. Amen. You know, like I said, it, some people say that no matter what you do in life, it doesn't really matter because in the end, it's already determined what the outcome for us is going to be. Well, what but that's not true. He tells us right here that he's continually molding us. 
depending on what we do. You know, depending on what we choose, the situations that we put ourselves in and, and the things that we do with our own lives determines how God molds us, this whether it be good world. or whether it be bad. This is reality. You know, verse 4, it tells us the potter is shaping the clay as he sees fit, meaning he does not have a mold. You know, he doesn't have a mold that we're all created from the same mold. They're, we're all created individually, all created differently. You know, a lot of times uh, I was watching videos of, of, of somebody doing this molding of the clay in the wheel, and no matter how hard they try, no two pots turn out completely 100% identical to each other. No two snowflakes the same. Because they don't, they don't measure. They don't have a set mold. They're not pouring this clay into a mold. They're doing it with their hands. So there's no way that they can make two identical. And this is the same way that God creates us with his hands in molding. There's no way that two people are completely That's identical God. to each other. You know, verse 5 through 10, it tells us that God's plan for us changes based on our actions. God has good plans for everyone. Yes, sir. Jeremiah 29. But when we live a life of evil and refuse to repent, then he reconsiders his good plans for us. Don't make me cry. He'll take, his, he'll take the good plans that he has for us and he'll change them. Because... If we're evil, we don't deserve God's good. God sent Jeremiah to tell the people to change their evil ways. And they told Jeremiah that they were going to do what they wanted to do. They were going to abide by the evil in their hearts. Very foolish. And so... What we do with our lives matters yes, in the sir. end. Yes, sir. You can't do bad all your life and then on judgment day expect a good outcome. Right. You can't do it. Amen. And that's why we are to live the best life that we can live. We can't live a perfect life Not by no means. Life. But we have to there strive to life. live the best life that we can Amen. live. There is a good life. I'm going to skip over to uh, Jeremiah chapter 19. <clears throat> it says, Thus said the Lord, Go and get a potter's earthen bottle and take to the ancients of the people and of the ancients of the priests and go forth into the valley of the son of Hinnom, which by the entry of the east gate and proclaim there the words that I shall tell you. And say here ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle. Because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned incense in it unto other gods whom neither their nor their fathers have known nor the kings of Judah and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. They have rebuilt also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal which I commanded not nor spake it neither came it into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophener, the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. And I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies, and by the hands of them that seek their lives and their carcasses, will I give to the meat of the fowls of the heaven and for the beast of the earth. The of the and I will make this city desolate and, and hissing. Everyone that passeth by 
shall be astonished and hissed because of all the plagues thereof. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend in the siege and straightness wherewith their enemies and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee, and shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people and this city as one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again. And they shall bury them in the Tophet till there be no place to bury. Thus will I do unto this place, saith the Lord, and to the inhabitants thereof, and even make this city as Tophet. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet because of all the houses upon whom roofs they were burned incense unto all the hosts of heaven and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Then came Jeremiah from Tophet, whither the Lord had sent him to prophesy, and he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all people, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks, and they might not hear my words. So he's telling these people all the things that God is going to do to them because of the choices that they've made. Because they refused to turn from their ways. You know, it's just, it's as simple as a single decision. It's as simple as a single decision. And I spent my whole life going to church, but I never made that one single decision. I made that one single decision so complicated because I thought about, well, you know what? I've got to quit doing this, and I've got to quit doing this, and I've got to quit doing this, and I've got to quit doing this. But the point is, is when you make that decision, all those things that you have to quit doing, they didn't matter in the first place. You know, they don't matter. It's a plain, simple, one single decision. And if we can get people to understand how simple the decision actually is, oh, you know, more people would come to God. It's, it's not a complicated thing. And I spent my whole life complicating this one single decision. This one single decision. I complicated it too much. And I want people to understand that once you make this one decision, the rest of it just falls into place. Amen. God will put everything else right out there into place for you. His spirit, the mind of Christ. All those things that you shouldn't be doing, you won't want to be doing. All those things that are going through your mind about, I, I just don't want to give this up. I don't want to give this up. When you make that decision and give your heart and life to God, you realize that Be a believer, man. I don't want to do those things no, anymore. No. You know, I, I don't want to be that person. I want to be a different person. Amen. But as the Bible tells us, there are some people that refuse. They are a stiff neck. People. They refuse. Willingly. They are stubborn. They, they don't want to make that decision. They don't want to change. They're, I don't know if they're scared to change or if they think they're just too happy where they're at with what they're doing or whatever the situation may be. They don't want to change. They refuse to change. Only God knows the heart. And God gave the illustration as to what's going to happen to these people. They're going to break. On Judgment Day. It's going to be very, very bad. <clears throat> and one of the things I was thinking about last night when I was studying this was this is not only for those people.
they refuse. This is not only a warning for those people they refuse. This is also a lesson for Christians. Because so many times Christians, they, they, it's like when you when you work with somebody to try to get them to come to church, it's like you got this investment. It's like you got this investment in this person. And he is telling us that not all investments are going to pan out. Because no matter how much you invest in someone, you can't force them to make that decision. And there, he's letting us know that there are some people that are going to refuse to change. There are some people that are going to die in their own stubbornness. That are going to die the same, being the same person that they have been their entire life. They're not going to change. And... Uh, you know, I've heard people say, I've worked so hard, and it just seemed like no matter how hard I work, it doesn't do any good. And he's letting us know that there are going to be those Only God that don't. Can change a heart. And it is not anything bad against what we have done. No. He's letting us know there are there are those people that there are stuck. Well he wants us to know that we shouldn't be hard on ourselves when we can't reach somebody. And I'm not saying give up by no means. You know, I'm not saying give up on them, but I'm saying God doesn't want us to be hard on ourselves when we can't reach those people. You know, when whenever it seems like we've done all that we can do and and you sit down and you start to think, well, you know, why maybe I didn't do enough. When it seems like you've done all that you can do and you begin to question yourself and think, well, maybe I didn't do enough. But God wants us to know that sometimes no matter how much you do, there are those that you can't reach. There are those that you can't change. Ultimately, it's their decision. And it's written here in the Bible. And so for those people that think that they can go through life and do whatever they want, the end result is already mapped out for them. No matter what they do, the end result is going to be the same. That's not true. The Bible tells us in chapter 18 that He is constantly molding us based on the decisions that we make. Based on on the imperfections of the clay. When a potter begins to mold this and he gets to this certain section in this, this bowl that he's making and he comes to this, this section where there's a void in the clay. Yeah. So in this void, what does he do? He improvises. Instead of making a bowl, he may shrink this down and make a cup. He improvises. He changed based on the imperfections of the clay. He's forever molding us into what we are to be. And what we become is based on the actions that we take in this world. And I, I just really, when, when I was thinking about that chapter 19, I hear so many Christians say, uh, you know, they get down on themselves a whole lot. And, you know, I, I've heard uh, my wife Brittany say things, you know, about, you know, I, I try so hard, I try so hard to reach this person. And it just seems like no matter how hard I try, it just seems like I, I, I can't get to them. It just seems like I, I can't convince them that this is the way that it that God wants it to be. You know, no matter how hard I try, and she begins to be down on herself and she'll say, we, am I not trying hard enough? Am I doing something wrong? Am I doing this? But he wants us to know that sometimes there are those that are just, I, I guess just a way to say it is they're too stubborn. You know? There are always those people that refuse to change no matter how hard you try. And He doesn't want us to give up. He wants us to continue to try. 
And he doesn't want us to get down on ourselves and, and hurt him on, you know, and get beside ourselves because we, no matter how hard we try, it seems like we can't reach that person. We have to continue. We have to push on. We have to keep, keep trying. We have to keep trying. No matter what, we have to keep trying to reach those people who seem to be unreachable. We have to continue to try. You can't focus all your energy on that one person, but you still can't give up on that one person. You know, you have to keep pushing and trying. 